Hey everybody, it's time for another episode of Badass Movie Time. I'm Andrew Gillen, and today I'm going to be talking about some movies that I own and enjoy. Um, I thought today's topic... I just realized I'm, I'm going through and editing these. Um, a lot of them are really long, I apologize, because I know some of you guys aren't really watching this shit. But uh, if you need, you know, if you need something to keep you company while you're doing your homework, or while you're doing writing or whatever... I'm just blabbing on about movies. Maybe I'll throw a movie at you that you've never heard of or a movie that you remember that you would like to see. I have a huge collection, though, and I don't... I was doing the math. I could potentially do 50 episodes for this, for my entire collection. I don't want to do that. I'm kind of already burnt out. And this is episode 19. So, 30 more episodes sounds pretty freaking crazy to me. Uh, maybe if... See, it sucks because the last time I did this, I had hundreds of people watching these videos. And right now, I only know of like three or four people that are watching some of them. So I'm kind of just throwing this up. So maybe if I make another movie or when my book's done or something, somebody's like, I wonder what this guy, you know, watches for his movies. I love this stuff. I watch, when I'm sitting on the toilet and I'm looking up stuff on YouTube, I'm looking at people's film collections and I'm talking, you know, I'm watching... Uh, talk shows about movies and shit like that. So I like this stuff. So I'm trying to contribute to that. But I don't have the same audience I, I did at one point. And, and I don't think there's much of an audience for, you know, hey, look how cool I am. Look at all my cool shit. But I like talking about movies. So this is an excuse to kind of hold the movie up and briefly talk about it for a second and not go too in-depth on it. Um, anyways, so tonight, today, tonight, whenever you're watching this, I wanted to talk about some of my Asian films. Alright guys, I'm so sorry. Um, so I started this all off with uh, the zombie episode. And I have a couple Asian zombie movies over here. I have Wild Zero uh, versus or Japanese. Bio Zombie was Chinese along with uh, Zombie Fight Club. And then I also talked about Train to Busan, which is uh, Korea's like World War Z. Which actually I put leagues above World War Z as far as the decent zombie movies go. That movie's amazing. So I, I've... I've talked about Asian horror before, so I'm kind of getting away, not all this is horror, by the way, a lot of it is, but, um, I'm gonna start out, uh, last year I did, a 11 to 12 page essay on Genghis Khan, and it was amazing, and the more I wrote, and the more I got into it, I started getting books, I got The Secret Life of the Mongolians, I got a book that translates that for you, and I ended up watching a movie, and this is what I kind of did my essay on. Uh, it was a movie called Mongol, The Rise of Genghis Khan. And this is what I think... I think I had to use this film. I had to get a, a copy of this film. And this had to be in my uh, my work cited, on my works cited page. And this ended up being my favorite thing about uh, Genghis Khan. And the, the topic of the essay was whether or not the movie was accurate or not. And so, you know, I used the books and I used what little history we do have of Genghis Khan. If you ever study Genghis Khan, it's some fucking interesting stuff. Um, this movie makes Genghis Khan a good guy. I would argue that he probably wasn't that great of a guy, considering he was a conqueror. But um, this is a really cool movie. If you're looking for, like, a decent histor history, like, if you're into this kind of stuff, this might be up there on my favorite um, movies. I believe this guy is Japanese. This movie was technically made by a German, I think, or a Russian. Sergei Bodrov. I think he is... German. This is a German film. And I believe it... I don't remember where it was filmed. Jeez. 
Anyways, this is a great movie. Check out Mongol. I know the lead guy is Japanese. He's not Mongolian, but he, he does a really good job. Going over to China. Um, as mentioned, I did the zombie stuff. I talked about some Jackie Chan stuff. I talked about, uh, I believe I talked about, like, Hard Boiled. And I talked about um, some Jet Li stuff. Um, one of my favorite Chinese movies, and Chow Young Fat from Hard Boiled is in this film, and you may have heard of it, I don't know. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. The first two DVDs I ever bought with my own hard-earned money was this film and 28 Days Later. I fucking love this movie. I would watch this movie every Saturday for about my entire sophomore year, and I love this movie. I think it'd be so cool to make a martial arts movie in this style. Just fantastic, like, just crazy. And I own a bunch more movies around here somewhere with the weird, you know, flying around stuff. But this movie is so beautiful to watch. One of my favorites. And this was a really popular movie back when I was a kid. Um, and that came out about four years before Kill Bill. I feel like Kill Bill kind of was doing more of that. I believe this movie is Chinese, but Dragon Ball The Magic Begins. Yes, folks. The shitty American live-action rendition of Dragon Ball wasn't the only shitty live-action rendition of Dragon Ball. This movie uh, came out back in the 90s or the 80s. 1993. Fucking horrible. I'm so happy I own this, though, because it's pretty rare. Um, just silly stuff, man. If you're familiar with Dragon Ball, I loved Dragon Ball when I was a kid. You know that this is off a little bit. <laughs> so that, that's the Chinese stuff. Now, my personal favorite... Uh, country to watch cinema from is probably Japan. Um, I do like Chinese films and I do like Korean movies, but Japan has the most movies that I really enjoy. And one of the top movies that has come out of Japan is a little film called Battle Royale. This movie is insane. Um, it is Fortress mixed with Lord of the Flies, basically. It's a bunch of kids. Our random class is selected a random class is selected by the government. Um, and all these kids are put on an island, and they're told that they have to kill each other in three days, or these collars on their necks are going to make their heads explode, unless there's only one left. So they have to kill each other, or they're all dead. So, and there's two of them. I don't like the sequel to Battle Royale whatsoever, but this is, like, one of the best movies ever made. So, and on the little box set to it. It's really fun. Fun stuff. Um, so I talked about Outlaw Star before. I'm not a big anime guy, but I do. There is good anime out there. One of my favorite comics when I was a kid was a little comic called Berserk. Berserker. Berserker. Uh, this is a Golden Age arc. I was hoping they'd do more, but I think they've been doing um, a running series. So there's three movies, and it goes through the, the same story that they keep telling. The best part of Berserk is the the Golden Age arc, basically. <coughs> Um, this is fucking brutal stuff. And the new thing with animation is they're, like, mixing CGI with, uh, hand-drawn stuff. So it's really weird on the eyes at first, but it's cool. This is a really cool, especially the, the third movie. Once, uh, Griffith, Griffith is, uh, in jail and stuff, and there's shit, like, leaking out of the wall. It's so cool and trippy. Um, I really like this. This, uh, beats the original anime that came out for this, I think. Um, another really cool Japanese comic was a little ditty known as Uzumaki, and I ended up getting a copy of Uzumaki. I believe I ordered this new, and I I put it into the Dragon Ball Evolution cage because the case got destroyed, the original case. It'd be nice to have a normal case with this movie because this is a beautiful film. This is a horrifying movie. This is live action, by the way, and it's crazy. Basically, the premise is this town becomes possessed with a spiral, and they do horrible things to turn themselves into spirals, basically. Um, great movie, man. So good. I haven't watched that for a while. I wouldn't mind watching that. Um, possibly one of the best Japanese animes ever, a animated films, is Akira. Hopefully you've seen Akira by this point. Um, if not, I encourage you to go check it out. It's great stuff. Um, Hiroku Hiroko Hiroko, the goblin. This movie is about goblins stealing people's heads and turning them into little crab goblin things. And the heads run around and eat people. And this archaeologist or paleontologist or whatever, this, this dinosaur guy, 
and his nephew set out to fight the goblins. This came out in the early 90s. There's kind of a stand-by-me feel at first with the, the friends running through, having a good, great spring. It's a really beautiful film, actually. It's uh, it's great. Um, the guy who did uh, Tetsuo the Iron Man did this, and I actually like this better than Tetsuo the Iron Man. But, um, it's good stuff. Was this his first? I think this was, he did this after Tetsuo. All right. I'm about to talk about a movie I don't really like that much, because it's weird. <laughs> There's a movie called... Was it called Ichi the Killer? Ichi the Killer, I think? Ichi the Killer was interesting. Um, so I got a movie called Ichi 1. And this is a prequel to Ichi the Killer. And this is basically about... I think Ichi was a main guy. I think that's how he became... In Ichi the Killer, there's like this ki this character who has like his, his blades that come out of the bottoms of his shoes, and he just cuts everybody up and just kicks ass, and he just has his rage in him. So this is like how that started. But there's a lot of stuff where he like he gets so excited when he's killing people and fighting people, he like ejaculates everywhere. So he'll like fucking kill a bunch of people, and then they'll look over and they'll be like ejaculate, it's like dripping off of stuff. It's weird, man. It's a weird ass movie. Um, not a big fan. Uh, I wouldn't mind owning Ichi the Killer over this, to be honest. But, um, I've only watched this once, and I was just kind of like, ugh. That's gnarly. It's probably one of the weirder films I own. Oh, no, never mind. We got another Korean movie here. Old Boy. I've talked about Old Boy before, I believe. I don't know why I grabbed it again, but, um, I guess I'll just encourage you to watch this twice on the show. Uh, bizarre movie, man, but it's good. This might be one of the best, uh, Korean movies I've ever seen. Um, <clears throat> my favorite scene is him fighting all the guys in the hallway. I think that is such a cool-ass, no martial arts. This dude's just fucking fighting a hallway full of dudes, and there's no cuts that I can tell. I like that kind of shit. All right, we're going to the other side of the continent now. Uh, I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but there's this little place called Bollywood in India, and they make insane movies. They're great. Uh, one of the biggest, and Danny Boyle did it, speaking of uh, 28 Days Later, um, Slumdog Millionaire. Uh, I don't know, was this film Asia? Whatever, man, this is a great movie. It takes place in India, and I love it. Basically, this, this character is playing uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and he tells his he goes through his life story. He goes back all the way up to when he went on to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and it's fucking so cool, man. It's one of uh, Danny Boyle's finest. Danny Boyle is a good filmmaker. I really enjoy uh, stuff. And then while we're in India, uh, Mahakal, Mahakal, the monster. Just basically their take on Freddy Krueger. The cool thing about uh, Bollywood films is you can find, like, there's a Bollywood Matrix, there's a Bollywood Terminator, there's a Bollywood Old Boy. There's an old, if you look up Old Boy Bollywood, there is an Old Boy scene where there's a guy fighting a bunch of people. They try to recreate stuff. So they did their own rendition of Freddy Krueger. Um, <coughs> the great thing about this DVD set is, uh,. Uh, Takhana, The Dungeon, is a much superior film to, uh, Mahakal. But, uh, Mahakal, I like The Dungeon a lot better. But this is cool. I, I just got it to kind of extend my Bollywood stuff. Getting Away from Bollywood, one of the best, one of the best slashers I've enjoyed in, over the last couple decades. It's a little ditty known as Hell's Ground. This is from Pakistan. And it's crazy, man. There's so many references. There's so much cool stuff in this movie. They did a great job. I don't know if you can find this anymore, but it's Danger After Dark, so look it up. Look up Hell's Ground. I encourage you to check it out if you're a fan of horror movies. Um, it's a really cool little set here. You got eating shit. My alarm is going off, which means I'm done with this episode. That was my Asian stuff. What's left of the Asian stuff? Um... I hear a lot of people say, oh, I don't like watching foreign movies, but it's kind of like, 
you know, uh, Americans, especially nowadays, you're just seeing the same shit regurgitated over and over again. So in order to kind of get something different and in order to experience something new, which is kind of the point of watching a movie, a lot of times it's to reflect, which, yeah, you'd probably want to watch an American movie. Sometimes you just want to watch some bizarre shit. Check out Bollywood. They're, those motherfuckers release like 100 movies a day. And then there's other stuff popping up now like Nollywood, which is uh, the film industry in Nigeria. Um, there's all kinds of really cool like other movies that you can watch. There's great movies that come out of New Zealand. There's great movies that come out of even England. Our brothers in the UK. Those motherfuckers make great movies. They have the best dry humor on the planet. Uh, Iceland has great stuff coming out of it. Uh, Finland did, uh, what was that? Um, that zombie, they did a really cool zombie movie. and yeah, Finland did that uh, vampire movie, uh, Let, Let the Right One In. Um, I've seen great movies coming out of France, Italy, Spain. All these people are doing great movies that all Americans won't watch because they don't want to fucking uh, read subtitles. And a lot of them are dubbed decently, so... I mean, yeah, the the mouths aren't syncing up. Just fucking don't look at the mouths, you know? Like, experience something new. Put yourself outside of your comfort zone. And, and you can... There's a whole slew of fucking movies that you can enjoy that you, you know, Americans aren't going to make, you know? I don't know. I'm done. I'm getting off the soapbox. Thank you guys so much for watching.